Well, here's another game for those of you who can never get sick of playing indie platformers. This is a Jasper Burn game known as Soul Brother, and uh, you know, I'll get to the gameplay mechanics in a little bit, but first, it's kind of cool just to talk about Jasper Burn because he's kind of a new guy on the indie scene. Uh, he just left his post at uh, Frontier Games, where you might recognize that as the studio that actually made Connectimals and Lost Winds, and uh, he's going uh, you know, the do-it-yourself route, the indie route, and he's going to pursue pursue a career, or at least pursue his passion doing that, and you know, kudos to him if, you know, on the off chance he's watching, that's really, really brave stuff, and the kind of stuff that's really inspiring. Anyway, this is a, like I said, it's a 2D indie platformer, but it's kind of unique in the, uh, you know, uh, the indie platform sphere, let's put it that way. And the game kind of has to be at this point to differentiate itself, because there are, obviously, a ton of them. They're, I guess, perhaps, probably the most, uh, popular indie genre. I can't say that with any sort of data to back it up, but based on the amount of indie games I play, I see a lot of platformers. But yeah, this one does things differently a little bit. Uh, you might have noticed uh, a little while ago there was actually a screen that told me to kill myself, and it wasn't just being an asshole. That's actually one of the key gameplay mechanics, actually the key gameplay mechanic here that, uh, that you need to follow. There's a number of different characters, and each character has different abilities. And the way you occupy different characters is not by any kind of character select screen, it's actually just by killing yourself like I did right there, and then occupying the next character on screen. So you're you're playing as multiple characters, but your hero is actually just the soul, I believe. The soul that floats back and forth between these different characters, embodying them for a brief period of time so they can accomplish the shared objective. And the objective, actually, is to collect all 33 of these soul gems. You can see one up there in the top right. So we're playing as the cat right now. The cat gets a double jump and is also extremely quick. Uh, I'm not sure how long I'm going to make this video because uh, it's pretty short. I think it'll probably run you about you know, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how hard you find the puzzles. The puzzles are not that difficult, but, uh, you know, well designed, well designed. Let's put it that way. This is really, really cool for a first effort, and I... I would definitely be interested in seeing uh, like a full IP of this, something that uh, you know came out and was more substantial, along the lines of uh, you know VVV VVV. And even though this game kind of looks like Super Meat Boy, the one it reminds me of by far, <clears throat> or is most reminiscent of by far, is uh, you know VVV VVV. This has definitely the same kind of vibe. Uh, and another similarity it shares: fantastic music. I'm really uh, I'm really digging the soundtrack so far. I actually don't have any information on who it's by, but uh, really cool stuff. Uh, anyway, like, yeah, like I said, the game the game is not that long, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to show. I've almost actually got uh, half of the soul gems right now, but we'll just keep it going so I can show off a little a little bit more of the level design. Because you know, if you've watched many of my videos, you know that that's what I like to harp on when it comes to platformers. I mean, harp on in a good way. Whenever there's well designed levels in a platformer, I, I like to point it out because again, that's one of the things that can set these uh, these. 2D indie platformers apart, and I hope uh, from the start of this video nobody thought I was ragging on platformers, because it is uh, probably my favorite genre, and of course my favorite game of all time is Super Mario World. Uh, I'm sorry, this room I'm going a little bit quickly here, I'll take, I'll take some time to explain the characters. The Meat Boy looking guy that we just were using right now is uh, able to fit through small crevices, and the Worm guy I used just before that is able to push over blocks uh, to like reveal areas that you could travel through, or previously blocked areas anyway. So, in terms of level design, I'd say there's a... At least in the first part of the game right here, uh, there's probably a two-thirds split. Two-thirds of the level are kind of more... Two-thirds of the levels are kind of more puzzle-oriented, like this one. Uh, and some of them have no gems in them, but are just kind of difficult from a platforming aspect. And that those maybe make up a third. This one is both a little bit tricky from a platforming aspect, and, uh, and kind of a puzzle one as well. You've got to find a way to get that gem at the bottom. Uh, the reason I keep killing myself when I die as the red guy is because the, the cat can't make it down there. His jump is just too high and he'll, uh, it, it's impossible for him to get down there and get back up. But the red guy, no problem. And then once we get to the bottom, we can just kill ourselves and then come back around this way. So if we take the right there, there's another path that we can go to. We'll see that a little bit later. But for now, let's go up. So you can see there's a soul gem there. And I have to admit, I actually don't know how to get this one, but we'll give it a try in a second. So we come up here, we can see, uh... A dead end, which the level name is, uh, you know, nice enough to tell us, but I, I still hung around there for a while. And now I can't figure out where to go from here. Uh, I, I don't think I can get on top of that cloud, no matter how much I jump for it. Uh, and I don't know how to get on top of this other platform on the right side here. I believe I need to drop down through the ceiling. There's a, there's a little hole that the red guy can fit through. You can see in like the top right middle of your screen right now. We'll, 
We'll get to that a little bit later. Not in this video, but uh, you know, at some point. If you're playing the game, you can get to it. So this is the yellow guy. Uh, he's kind of a bird, so he can actually fly over obstacles, and that's pretty useful. But also uh, a little bit tricky sometimes, uh, because there's usually... Well, I shouldn't say usually, but sometimes there's only one way you can get past an obstacle. Like, see this, this uh, second set of saws down here? I can't get past that middle saw until it's behind me. I can't jump in there beforehand uh, and then try to get in front of it, if that makes any sense to you. I feel like my platformer lingo is weak right now. And this guy has some pretty, uh, some pretty challenging puzzles as well, and pretty challenging platforming, I should say. And this is one such level. This is uh, probably the most challenging screen that we've seen so far. What you got to do is jump up and float, glide over to the left side, jump up and float, glide over to the left side, uh, and then jump up again. Anyway, you'll see that all when it actually goes down. Let's talk a little bit more about the the meta game uh, here, or the uh, the circumstances surrounding this game. This is a flash game, uh, playable in your browser, obviously. 100% uh, free. It's located on the Adult Swim website, and Adult Swim has actually had a, a couple of interesting games that have come out recently. Uh, there's another one I played on there a little while ago. Well, I guess the most famous one uh, on Adult Swim is Robot Unicorn Attack, that game with the uh, the soundtrack. I can't remember the name of the song, but uh, it's like, Always I Want to Be With You and Make Believe With You and Live in Harmony, Harmony. Anyway, that's Robot Unicorn Attack. That was a fun one button. Uh, one button. I guess you can call it a platformer, for lack of a better word. Uh, and also they had this weird racing game that showed up a little while ago where you didn't drive cars, you actually drove naked people. But anyway, that was pretty fun. That was that was a, a funny game. I didn't do a let's look at it that because I thought, you know, you know, YouTube might take it down with their, uh, their privacy filter, or their decency filter, I should say. Uh, and we'll, we'll probably stop the let's look at here, but uh, it's worth noting, yeah, this is uh, available on the Adult Swim website. I'll put a link in the video description for anybody that wants to check it out. Uh, good stuff. Highly recommended. Uh, support this guy. He's, uh, you know, he's worked on some uh, AAA stuff, or, you know, well, depending on how you feel about connectables anyway, uh, some AAA stuff. And, um, you know, it's always nice to have people that have, uh, it's always nice to have do-it-yourself people, people that have built themselves up from the ground up. Uh, but it's also good to have people that are, you know, trained in the biz. They've got, they've got skills that they can work on. And it's clear that the guy loves making games. He knows what his passion is. He just wants to do it by his own terms now. And if he keeps making games like this, I have no complaints whatsoever. So again, this is Soul Brother. And I'll put a link in the video description. Strongly encourage you guys to check out this reincarnation-based 2D indie platformer. See you later.